The elimination of corporate state income taxes proposed by House Speaker Charles McCall appears to have hit a roadblock in the Senate. The proposal would phase out state income tax for corporations, but there isn't much support for it in the Oklahoma Senate. President Pro Tem Greg Treat says the Republican caucus opposes the cut while the state's economy is recovering from the effects of the pandemic. While McCall's bill is stalled right now, it could still be part of budget negotiations. 29 Oklahoma flags have been placed on the south lawn of the state capitol as a reminder of the 29 children lost to neglect and abuse last year. Along with the Oklahoma flags, American flags are planted as well to represent the children killed around the nation. The legislature recognized April as Child Abuse Prevention Month earlier this week. Governor Stitt has or will soon sign three significant pieces of legislation into law. With more on that, we're joined by eCapital News Director Sean Ashley. Well, Sean, lawmakers have been trying for quite a while now to pass Ida's law, and this week it got over the finish line. Tell us about that. This is an issue that lawmakers have been working on for a number of years. I covered an interim study on the issue, I think, as far back as 2017. And it has to do with missing and murdered Indigenous people, particularly Indigenous women. It's named after Ida Beard, who has been missing since 2015. And what this does is to encourage cooperation between the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation, the Department of Justice, and the U.S. Attorney's Office to collect data so that law enforcement agencies are aware of these missing Indigenous persons, particularly women. And it also would provide funding from the federal government in that effort and to improve efforts to find them and to convict those who might have done them harm. Some good news for Oklahomans who are suffering from diabetes this week. Lawmakers have now passed a bill that re would reduce the costs paid by individuals for their insulin. It would lower the cost to $30 for a 30-day supply and $90 for a 90-day supply. Senator Greg McCourtney pointed out that work still needs to be done to lower the overall cost because even though diabetics now may pay less for insulin, their insurance companies may still be paying a greater portion of that high price. He wants to see that issue addressed and ultimately fixed. You know, I imagine uh, Governor Stitt will take great pride in signing legislation that is actually named after the First Lady. Most individuals, when they come out of prison, no longer have a driver's license or a government-issued ID. It has been expired or revoked. This legislation puts in place a process to work with the Department of Corrections and the Department of Public Safety in getting those licenses and IDs in the hands of former offenders as they're preparing to leave. First Lady Sarah Stitt played a big role in that process back in, in 2019. One Oklahoma lawmaker reacting to threats from the NCAA to pull their events out of states that passed laws banning transgender athletes from competing in women's sports. Tell us more about that. Representative Sheila Deals, a Republican from Tulsa, stated that we cannot sacrifice our Oklahoma values, which include fairness in sport and the protection of opportunities for women and girls in Oklahoma for the sake of dollars or even the popularity of such events. Now, in Oklahoma, this deals with Senate, Senate Bill 2, which was amended to address transgender athletes in sporting events and essentially prohibit them. Um, the bill has yet to be heard, and it's questionable whether it will be. But she is definitely taking a stance in support of the bill and against the NCAA. And again, you know, the NCAA brings the College World Series for the women to Oklahoma City every year. So we'll keep an eye on it. Sean, thank you very much. You're very welcome.